Hello. Hello, everybody. Hey, Psyder. Hey, my Logify. Aragon. Mr. Silu. And Paul Morgan. Hope everyone is having a smashing start to the weekend. So, I don't know if you remember, or those who remember, those who don't. Um, a little while back, um, I did some streams in this puzzle game called Signal State, which is kind of based on modular synthesis. Um, there's a pretty cool story. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I don't want to give away too much about the storyline because it's pretty cool. You guys should check, definitely check it out um, if you're into puzzle games. Um, but for those who remember, I kind of brute forced my way through the story mode. Trying to do several of the puzzles, which I actually, I think is awesome because, you know, the puzzles are kind of designed to teach you about logic, uh, modular synthesis, and things like that. Um, so the game has recently been updated with a new, basically the modules from story mode, alongside some new modules which they've added to use the system to make music. Um, I always knew they were going to add the sandbox mode, but um, they've actually finally done it, which is really cool. So today we're going to dive into the sandbox mode. I want to talk about a couple of the, like, the basics that you probably need to know um, if you are wanting to use it. Um, and yeah, there's also something to, to note is that it is it is quite basic. So um, in terms of like the audio path and stuff like that, it's not like a full modular synth. So, you know... I wouldn't expect to use it for like advanced sound design or anything like that, but it's just really cool to kind of like bash out some ideas and, you know, to, to kind of uh, learn musical ideas in a kind of less formal setting, you know, a kind of more um, playful setting, I guess. So yeah, this is it. This is the signal state sandbox mode. Um, so like I said, I mean, it's a little bit basic in terms of what you can do. Um, with the audio routing. So um, let me just make an example in terms of like how it differs from a traditional synthesizer. So here we've got a synth voice and the audio, when you add a synth voice, the audio is automatically patched to the output or to your speakers. So there's no way of really controlling how, you know, adding separate effects or anything like that. Um, Make a touring machine. <laughs> yes, uh, hopefully we are going to be doing that. So, for example, there is like a master reverb, but it applies to everything. So, oh, can you... I can't decide if she wants to be in or out of the studio today. Can you, can you just hear the pause tapping the whole time? <laughs> um, so... Yeah, for example, like if we have a drum voice and a synth voice and we apply the... Oh, now she wants to go out. Um, and we apply the reverb, it gets applied to both. So that limits you somewhat in terms of, um, you know, how we can patch the outputs and that kind of thing. But hopefully they will, you know, eventually add some kind of uh, thing, uh, some sort of system in which we can, you know, mix the audios, um, in different ways. I mean, each of the modules do, does allow, you know, for pan, for level control, and that kind of thing. Um, so you're not too limited, but like I said, um, it's kind of more just for, for experimenting with ideas uh, on the sequencer side of things uh, and working out or learning about logic and that kind of stuff. So... Yeah, I'm just going to start experimenting. Um, here, what we can do is we can actually um, punch in a BPM. Let's actually go for something a bit more chilled today, maybe like an ambient thing. Um, and here, this is an important setting. So in the regular game mode, you don't have the synced playback because it's kind of designed to uh, debug circuits and that kind of thing. But obviously for music, you want... Um, you want... Uh, the playback to be synced. So let's just put that on and we can start adding some modules that we think we'll need. So let's put in a step sequencer. Um, you can actually scroll down as well. You've got some space to add more stuff. 
um, and we're going to want a CV sequencer. So I've already got some ideas of kind of like what we can do. Um, I think the idea of a Turing machine uh, is is a pretty good idea. Um, for now, let's actually let's not worry too much about drums. Let's just make some synth sounds. Um, um, I think the idea of a Turing machine is actually pretty cool. We can uh, maybe do something like that a little bit later, creating a random generator uh, and using, uh, where is it now? There's a sampler, this. Um, this is not like an audio sampler because it doesn't really work at audio rate, but it's more of like a value sampler. So what you can do is you can use it to sample values and then loop those over and over again. Um, so this is what I should present to my kids. Absolutely, I think this is really cool because it kind of breaks the, you know, for people that are into puzzles and that kind of thing and don't understand that there's an element of that in music and how fun that can be, you know, exploring these kinds of things can ignite a spark in somebody who's not really interested in music, but maybe they might be interested in modular synthesis or something like that, you know what I mean? So that's why I think this kind of thing is really interesting. Um, so we can do the Turing machine a little bit later. Let's just look at maybe sequencing a pretty simple synth voice. Um, so what we're gonna need is, for now let's not use the step sequencer, let's just use a CV sequencer and we're gonna need a clock. So there is a, a multi-clock, which is pretty cool. This is basically like um, divisions from your actual clock. So something weird, like I still quite haven't wrapped my head around how, uh, why they've done it this way is that you can't actually get a single clock. You have to multiply it. So all of the clocks have like a division of two as like the the fastest clock that you can do. So. Um, and I believe it's because, obviously, if you think about modular synthesis and you look at these blocks, um, a clock is like just one little trigger here, but th everything is kind of interpolated or quantized in this system. So like, to be able to have an on and then an off value, you need to think in like double the clock and then halving it when you need it. I don't know if that's making sense, but <coughs> that was the first kind of stepping stone, I think, or kind of like puzzle element um, that I had to figure out, I guess, in the um, in the sandbox mode. So what we can do is we can actually just straight off the bat set this to times 16, and then we can use this divide by 16 clock as the actual 16th trigger. Does that make sense? So now this should be sequencing at uh, 85 BPM. And what we can do then is we can set this output to go to the pitch, and then we're gonna need a trigger. So we could either, I guess we can just see, for now sequence it on the 16th. So another thing is like with this, um, unlike something like VCV rack is, if you have a cable, you have to use a splitter to actually split it into multiple outputs. I guess it's more how you would do it in the real world. You would need some kind of malt or something like that. So let's just play around with this and see how this kind of sounds. Let's move this to uh, one, five steps. And then we can just put in a sequence like this. Okay, so obviously it's not like uh, very musical. Uh, one thing that slightly annoys me is that when you press space, so check here, if we press space it plays, and then when you press space again it pauses rather than stops. So you actually have to scroll up to this to press stop. 
I don't know if there's a hotkey. In fact, let's actually find out uh, if there's a hotkey for stop. X. Okay. That's good news. Ha, huh, okay. <laughs> um, so here what we can do is we can add in a quantizer module. What's up, Alchemy? How you doing, dude? How you doing? Have you also checked out the game yet? So, the synth voices, or each of the kind of, there's a chord voice, a drum voice, and a synth voice. Um, each of them actually has a program parameter, which you can modulate. So this is pretty cool. For example, if we want uh, to create something that sounds like multiple sounds, but being sequenced by a single source, like a single kind of uh, like a single melody, but that's kind of doing a hocket style sequence. What we could do is we could sequence this uh, program parameter with another CV sequencer. So we're going to want to clock this as well.
I thoroughly enjoyed the story mode. I actually finished it. Like, not many games I actually finished the story mode. It, I guess because it's not, like, it's not very long, but you learn as you're going. Do you know what I mean? Um, there's kind of, like, it's a logic puzzle-based game. So, for example, one of the levels will be, like, make, uh, make a, a, a randomizer, and it'll give you a noise and a sample and hold module, and then you figure out how to make a randomizer using very basic logic tools. Um, and it also teaches you how to make, like, uh, for example, there is these logic modules, an AND module, and then like a NOT module, and an OR module. But then it teaches you how to combine them in different ways to make exclusive ORs and NOTs and all sorts of things, which I guess in the, in the real world, like how often are we going to use that thing? But, it, you know, these kind of puzzles, I guess, help you to think laterally and as a music producer it's often those kinds of things which you just need to think outside of the box a little bit do you know what i mean um like for example i can think of like using a plugin in in a way that you're not necessarily supposed to use it to create interesting sounds and stuff you know it's those types of things that you don't really think of if you don't challenge your brain to think outside of the block outside of the box often do you know what i mean so that, i guess it's um, it's why I often like puzzle games. Um, I'm not a huge gamer, but like I do really enjoy. I did stream story mode, so don't go check it up like the whole thing because there might be some spoilers there. Um, but check out a little bit of it um, and jump through it if you do want to see like what it's all about. Um, but it's super fun if you are into like puzzle games and that kind of thing. Because, I mean, it also, like, I mean, if you think about it just um, straight off the bat, I mean, it teaches you things about, like, that you could apply to things like VCV rack or even Bitwig's grid um, and that kind of thing. Um, like I was saying earlier, it is a little bit, uh, it is a little bit basic in terms of, like, one master reverb on all the sounds um, and those kinds of things. But still, like, already here, like, you know, having one synth voice playing a thing and then another one just modulating through a different preset. Those kinds of things, like, you can apply that in making music to really good results. Um, but having these basic building blocks often force you to do these things, and then you find these, like, oh, you know, I want to try doing this, where I have, like, a preset modulator kind of system that's built into my DAW and that kind of stuff, you know. Um, but also, like, what I, what I actually want to do a little bit later is we're going to kind of do a two-piece puzzle where we're first going to make a, a randomizer using the noise and the sample and hold module. But then we're going to use a recorder to record it and loop it. So we can kind of create, um, I don't know if you know Riffer, but it's that thing that randomly generates sequences. And then you can kind of just get it to randomize something. And if it's good, you let it loop over and over again. So we can create something like that using very basic building blocks, which we can get to a little bit later. So one thing that keeps this kind of melody a little bit interesting is the fact that um, you see the, the CV sequencer is on eight steps, but the preset sequencer is on five steps. So no two loops are going to actually loop the same. So you're kind of hearing a different combination of those presets every time. So we can take that concept like one step further and we could create a step sequencer. Um, and for example, like trigger this with a, 
increments of seven steps so that we could have like, let's say some kind of Euclidean sequence on seven steps like that. Now, because their numbers are like uneven numbers, they're going to kind of loop semi awkwardly, but this creates a kind of like a musical pattern, which is kind of non repeatable, which is really cool. Okay, so now say for example, we like this melody, but we want more layers, you know, we want more of a musical arrangement, you know, it's a little bit basic, it kind of just sounds like, you know, a single preset in, in, a, in a plugin or something at the moment. So what we could do is we can split this output into several voices. So we have a single melody running, and then we just trigger these voices independently um, using, you know, different timescales. So for example, we could have one running with this sequence that could be like a bass note. And then we could have in higher octaves, a ping every now and then, but at the same uh, pitch, or we could tune it to like a fifth or something like that um, to create interesting results. So let's set this here and then let's mult this. And then let's create another synth voice, but we're also gonna need a bias so that we can offset the voltage going into the pitch by an octave. So we can actually, let's just put this here. Will it fit? Yeah, cool. Um, bias, and then let's set this output to the bias and then into the pitch. So here's something weird. It's kind of different in this game than uh, real world synthesis is that in modular synths an octave is one volt so the standard is called one volt per octave but obviously just because of the kind of i guess uh, value system in the game they don't have these incremental you know point voltages so they've made it that 12 volts is an octave I think that VCV rack is much better. I mean, of course. I mean, if you if you if you want to do modular sound design, yes, VC, VCV rack is better. If you just want to have fun, solve puzzles, and play a game, I guess like nerds like me, you know, in our off time, we you know, like when we want to play a game and we want to kind of get away from music, we play games that are around like based around <laughs> music. <laughs> Okay, you know, we just can't avoid it. <laughs> um, I have, but I just realized it is probably getting in the way. Should I remove that? Should I remove that? I wasn't thinking. Now that I'm like looking at it, and you've said something about it, it does look obscene. Um, so, yeah, okay, 12 volts is an octave in this game. So if we set this to, like, 24, then this is going to be two octaves above the bass sound. And then let's set this to one of these lanes here, and then we can just ping it every now and then, and let's set this to 15 steps, and just randomly put those in.
if we're feeling really fancy, what we could do is we could split it before a quantizer, pitch it to random numbers, and then it'll always result in like coming out in a something that is in the scale. So this is going to be getting a little bit more complex. Um, but what I want to do here is let's just remove this routing that we created to this synth. And instead of splitting it here, so this one is going to then go back to this pitch, right? I wonder if we can duplicate a module. Uh, is it this one? Yeah. And then, okay, the pitch is then, like the scale that we've punched in is then the same. And let's split it before this, right? And then send these outputs to the two separate quantizers. But then before this quantizer, we actually want this bias control. So now what we can do is we could set this to, for example, not octaves, something like random numbers, and this will create chords. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Pray. <laughs> hey, Merlin, how's it, Bri? <laughs>sounds a bit awkward maybe we could just leave it at the octave and then have like a different one at like the 24 maybe we could change different presets it's because we've split this now before the quantizer. I actually want to redo what I did there. This is going to go in there. This is going to come out here. Yes.
can actually start slowing down certain elements. Like, for example, what did I do there? Let's clock this sequence at like a slower rate. Oh, here's also the other cool thing is like right now I'm actually running this with a loop loopback thing. So like I could potentially just record this loop into Bitwig and make a beat with it. Like maybe we can even do that. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm not. It's not a long stream, but like who knows? Maybe we could just make a beat with, with something we made in 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 thingy <laughs> in signal state. <laughs> We can even set up some macros uh, using this fader bank. So how this works is we could set up the fader bank here in the corner, and then we could get it to send using attenuators. So what these do is these obviously scale a value up and down. So it allows you to, let's say, send one, two, three, four. And then these we can send to different things. And this is then the amount of voltage that gets sent through to the thing. So, for example, if you don't want like a lot of movement, you just want like fine control, then you would set it to like 40%.
actually, you know what the what the I think the real move should be is to create like LFOs and randoms, and then we use that fader bank to control VCAs instead um, of the attenuators, and those VCAs are going to control the amount of a certain parameter that gets modulated. So let's say remove these for now. Uh, let's add the LFO. Hey Dustavi, hey everyone else who's tuning in. Hope you're all having a good start to the weekend. So here, let's send this output. Uh, we can go plus and minus, so that's the um, bipolar modulation. <coughs> and then let's send this output to that low part. In fact, just to make things uh, easier to hear, like all around, let's set, a split, let's set up a split. And then this will just send to all of those cut cutoffs. So we can control it all at once. And just turn them all down a little bit. So we've got more range on the parameter. And then this VCA CV, we should control with this. So then this is going to be like the amount of modulation. We actually probably want this sign shape rather than, or triangle shape rather than the saw. Attenuators are just for the modulation, so the volume, the audio path, you don't really have much control over. Um, I think here, what, what I want to do is, let's talk about the sum. So this module we could use to create, uh, for example, if we want to, why is it not, oh, stop playback. Uh, if we want to mult several inputs, so like here, for example, we've got this LFO going to this, low pass, but say for example we want several modulations to go in there, we use a sum, and then you can send several inputs to this. Uh, so then here, get this one, and we want one here. And then here for example we can get this split, and we can send this fader to just control all of the, the cutoffs like live, uh, like this. And then we can do this one, which can control like a random amount. Yeah, this, this is the filter. Now we've applied it because each of these synth voices has like a built-in filter. It's got a high pass and a low pass, actually. We could modulate the high pass as well. We could create a whole nother fader bank. And just play with a patch for, for hours. <laughs> Thank you. 
The story mode is fantastic for learning basic concepts of logic and patching and stuff for modular synthesis, absolutely. I'm just going to be right back. I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, let's talk about how to make a clocked randomizer. So for those who don't know the kind of uh, logic behind a randomizer, it is essentially a noise generator and then values from the noise generator just get sampled out at increments. <laughs> so let's say uh noise i wonder if we can visualize this on the scope this this uh, oscilloscope is not great for seeing values because it's stepped check this out Um, but I guess it will work in this case because let's say for example split this output and then let's put in a sample and hold over here and so the noise is going into the sample and hold and the out is coming out so then let's gate this at the clock speed and then let's look at the difference between these two values over here Do you see how it's it goes to minus 27 when the trigger arrives and then it stays at minus 27 until the next trigger in fact let's actually clock this a little bit faster um, just so we can see a little bit better what's going on let's say this like 1 over 4 Okay, do you see that? So it's arrives at 14 
and it sits there until the next clock arrives then it goes down to minus 27 because that's the value of the noise generator at the time that the clock arrives so it's essentially creating random voltages at a uh, predetermined clock that you choose so let's say for example set this to um, back to the 16th clock and then um, we can actually remove this and we don't need the splitter here anymore we might need it later and then this sample and hold output we can send through a VCA and then we're going to need to split it and send it to those sums that we created. Hey, it's getting complex. <laughs> So what if we, we use that same idea uh, of the sample and hold and the noise to create random pitches and send that into the quantizer? And then we have something generative that's going to just constantly make random sounds for us or random melodies. Um, so let's take the noise. Let's get a sample and hold. So with this one, I found we want to use the plus for the pitch. I've just found that that seems to be better. Um, and then instead here, let's send that into this quantizer, right? And then let's clock this at the same speed that this CV was being clocked. We could actually put both of these modules at the top there. Oh, you can't. Oh, no. What? Why? Please, please, I want to... Okay, wait, we're going to have to do some arrange... Oh, no, it's gone. Okay, it's fine. It's actually probably better. Let's put it at the top. Well, I guess then we'll never be able to move it, but it's fine. <laughs> and then let's gate this at the same speed of this one, and then this output goes into the quantizer.
So obviously the value range is too high. It's going like right up above the pitch range and right down below. Or well, not below because obviously this is a plus. Let's try plus and minus. But here, what we're gonna want to do is actually scale down the values before it hits the quantizer. So let's use the attenuator to scale those values by let's say 50% or so. Let's just try that. Some actually pretty nice, some cinematic, brassy kind of sounds in there. I'm actually kind of liking this. So now the thing is, it's doing some nice things. However, it's not repeatable. You know, when it does the nice thing, it's like, ah, I like that. It's gone forever. Lost in the moment. Like moments in time, lost in rain. It's been too long since I've seen that movie. I don't know if that quote is right, but anyway. Um, we can go ahead and remove that CV sequencer and try to figure out a way in which we can repeat these random sequences. And a really fun way of doing this is using a sampler, which is essentially just a recorder. But you can actually do this in, you know, in modular synths, in Bitwig, all sorts of things where you can record modulations and let that loop. Oh, Psydo, you must have missed the part where I explained that this is all actually running as a loopback into Bitwig, so I could potentially just record it and make a beat out of it. <laughs> That's the one, Tears in Rain. Okay, so the sampler is a bit tricky to work out. You need um, values going to the position to modulate it upwards, but then you also need um, no, no. You can either modulate the position or you can use the forward backwards by switching this every clock, I think. Yeah. And then what we want to do is we want to set up some way of turning on the record buffer. So there's actually like a switches thing. It probably looks so obvious. Oh, here we go, here we go. There we go. And then we can set this to record. And then when we press any of these buttons, it should send out positive voltage. Oh, it only triggers, it doesn't actually stay there. I wonder how we can, uh, with a sample and hold, with a sample and hold, if we send the input, and gate at the same time. Uh, will it be this one? 
and then send the output. And so this will wait till it's the next triggered, I think. Okay, so now it's actually not, it's not stopping. We need some way of turning it on and then off. I don't think the sample and hold is the right way to do it. I think a sequential switch might be. And we have a trigger. And then this one will trigger through two channels. One which has 100% voltage going in. And one with nothing. Oh, no, wait, we need the... Uh, uh, Switch the other way around. The four to one, not the one to four. The reversed switch. Eh? One to four input channels to the output. Oh yes, that is the one. We've made a Turing machine. So we're essentially randomizing values and we're able to loop them when we need them. So for example, we use this button to switch it into record mode and then it records values. And then when we like what we hear, we just turn that off and we get the result that we want. This is very nice. Um, I wonder if there is a simpler way of the switches because this is very it's a very big thing um i also want to just try this again up and down pitch
brilliant. So here, I actually want more resolution in the sampler. As you can see, there's two steps that are staying at the same value. And we can deduce that by clocking that at a higher rate, no, lower rate, we would then be able to, because obviously the sample and hold is only generating values at the 16th, whereas the, this has been clocked on the 8th. So what happens is it generates, this clocks twice every time this generates a value. So we could potentially go like this and then just speed the whole thing down and then we get more resolution or more different steps in the sampler. Yeah, the, the voltages and those things going along the cables, that is necessary to finish the story mode. Like, you won't be able to do it without those. It really helps with debugging. No, story mode doesn't have voice modules. I don't know if they're going to add it and stuff. They may. I, I don't think so, though. It's. I think the story mode is more about logic puzzles. And I think the draw card is there that it appeals to people, a wider range of audience, not just people inside of the modular synth uh, industry or uh, field. So what if we didn't even have a clock? You know, what, or we, well, we had a clock, but we used some other way of generating the clock, not the BPM. And we could modulate that um, to create some kind of generative Krell patch. Um, we could use a LFO. Where is the LFO now? 
and these, instead of the multi-clock, uh, in fact, we're going to need some way of clocking this one, but it's fine, we'll work that out in a moment. Instead of the multi-clock, we can actually just split this from an LFO. Let me just put one up here. Turn the frequency way down low. And then send this to here. I wonder if this will work. I guess it's like every time it receives any value, then it pings. So we may need to turn it down so that only when it reaches the beginning or end of the cycle uh, will it actually do like hit that. Does that make sense? Hey, Silosab. So we could probably actually use the min and max. Uh, outputs the lower of the two. No, we would need the one that outputs the higher of the two. Send the input to that. And then we send a bias input at like 99 volts. So only when it reaches 100 volts. Oh no, but then it's going to... It's gonna Okay, wait, no, 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 we need to, uh, I'm doing it wrong. We need to attenuate. It's like 10%. I wonder what the value will be then. Let's check on the oscilloscope. I'm actually being silly. You know what the easiest way to do this is going to be? Is with a sequential switch again. And then we have one input that's going in that's like one volt. And then we use the CV from the LFO to control the stepping of the switch. Um, and then this could be like a... Div divider like a clock divider because if we send let's say for example like one volt in there it can clock one volt down 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 one volt down 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 or we could say like that and then it'll just divide it by two does that make sense <clears throat>
maybe this value needs to be scaled down because it seems to just like trigger too quickly. Okay, it doesn't seem to be working too well without that clock. I guess modulating clocks is like a, a weird thing anyway. Um, but let's go back to that generative thing that we had going. I think that was very cool, uh, that, that idea. Um, so all we needed was that multi-clock over here. <clears throat> and then this, we can send... Was it the 16th? And then the one over 32 was in this one? Was it like this? So another a concept that we can apply here, which is a very basic form of actually something that I learned in a Venus theory video, is that um, if we have like a sequence and we have multiple voices playing in that sequence, a really nice way of being able to kind of like get them to sound more musical is to offset the kind of like, um, I guess you could think of it as like if you have different uh, tapes playing, you offset the playhead of the tapes by using a signal delay to delay the pitch inputs of the pitch signal that's going to these synth voices. So, um, in Bitwig, you can obviously do stuff that's a little bit more complex by um, using, um, that Polarity actually did a really cool video on this with uh, polyphonic voices in the grid. Uh, why can't I move this one? like stuck there okay so let's put in a signal delay and let's delay this by like let's say three or f yeah and then this one let's delay by like two And then the bass will have like at the same time. So now when a, a, a note comes through, it's not going to play at the same time on all three voices. Sometimes they're going to be at different times and stuff. Um, no, it's going to create chords rather than a chorus effect.
wonder why it's not allowing us to delay. Uh, you can't actually set the clock of the delay. So it's like not clocking at the right time. Uh, I guess what we could do is slow the whole thing down. You know, with this kind of thing, actually a Phrygian scale might not be the greatest idea because I'm seeing that because we're randomizing the stuff, there's a C playing and a C sharp, which might not be a good idea. So let's maybe shift this more into like uh, minor territory. I believe the interface designs and stuff in the game were made by Paper Noise Designs, which is not only the person who's responsible for a bunch of the stuff in VCV Rack, but Paper Noise Designs actually makes a lot of hardware designs as well. Um, not just the looks of the stuff, but how they're actually laid out. Um, I know Paper Noise Designs uh, worked with uh, Hex Inverter on the Mind Phaser, if I'm not mistaken as well as like a lot of mutable instrument stuff. Um, you can kind of see there's a, a certain aesthetic in the modular realm that you can kind of attribute to paper noise designs. Um, mutable instruments, hex inverter. Uh, what's the one with the, the blob delay? All right devices. I'm pretty sure they um, work on their stuff as well.
I guess what we could do is just add more signal delays to delay it more. <laughs> yes, let's do that. Let's do that. You just add like another one and max that out. And another one. <laughs> Why not? Uh, this, let's probably go with in like full on this one. Really separate those voices. That's epic. That is epic. With the modular sound design and stuff, I don't usually have too much of an idea of where I want to go, except if I'm in like a performative mood. You know, if I'm like jamming. Speaking of which, um, I think the case is pretty much done, um, and I'll probably be streaming probably again on Monday. Um, but yes, I've got some exciting things with the actual modular synth. Um, but anyway, um, unless I'm in like a <laughs> Excuse me, in a performative mood, then I usually kind of just like to experiment and kind of like see where the flow takes me, you know?
So what if we got some modulation going with like the panning? I think that could get some more excitement going. Housekeeping. <laughs> Hey, Lucas, Jorge, yeah, I'm busy streaming right now. Coming at you live and direct with the bleeps and bloops, as always. Okay, let's do some uh, panning. Man, I, this is what I've been doing for the past few days. It's just moving modules around. And I, I promise you, like, I'm sure, I'm sure every modular person has done this before. Where you screw the whole rack together, and then you hit the power switch, and it looks like, why is nothing powering on? And then you remember, you haven't even plugged the powers in yet. You, you just screwed everything, and then you have to take it all out again. Get the powers in.
yeah man those nerlies so here's the thing like i was busy like about to check out um the last time i bought stuff and i saw it there the nerlies and i was like you know what it'd be really cool to have those it would make life a lot easier and i was like you know what i don't need it so i'm not going to spend the extra on it and then one of the modules i got came with nerlies and i actually i screwed them in and i and i just i realized then fuck, i sh should have got them because it would have just like saved me a couple of hours probably in the past few days and then um and then i realized they're clever to include it free with the module because then then you know firsthand how good they are. I wonder where they learned that tactic. <laughs> Oh, damn it. What have I done? Which one did I remove now? It was the attenuator. I think it was like 30%, but now where did it come from? It was going in here. It was coming from that sample and hold. This one, it must have been.
Every software should do an undo, bro. We're here in 2022 and some, and some stuff still doesn't have undo. But I guess it's like, it's a game, so like, you know, when, uh, you don't ever see undoing games, you know, it's more for like, productive software, you know, but yeah, anyway. This should, attenuator should actually be before the record, uh, after the recorder. The signal in should come from here. And then the out should go, go like this. So that you can sequence something and then change the range. Yes. Thank you. 
Okay, we're gonna have full macro control now. <laughs> Going wild. I wonder if, like, at any point we could, like, crash the CPU, you know what I mean? Because of all the... I guess there's no audio processing happening. You know what I mean? So maybe that's why the audio path... They've left it so you can't really edit the audio path and stuff. Maybe it's because of that. Well, I guess you could probably just keep adding synth voices and it would probably also just, like, at, one, at some point it would overload, you know? I wonder. Probably, <laughs> he's probably already using the GPU because it's like a game, you know what I mean? Games code to use the GPU.
No, I wish there was granular effects in this. <laughs> There's, you, you can't, you can't really edit the audio path. So at this point, it's mainly just uh, sequencing and that kind of stuff that you can do and logic-based stuff. Um, so no harsh effect, uh, no effect except for the the stereo reverb. That being said, is I did actually um, mention it um, when I spoke to the folks um, there, or at least the person who I was corresponding with. Um, I did mention that it would be cool to have some way of editing audio path, at least to be able to choose what has reverb and what doesn't. Because, say for example, you want to add a drum alongside a synth. The synth you want reverb on, the drums you don't necessarily want. Do you know what I mean?
Okay, I think the problem is that all of the low pass filters are being clocked by the same random, so we need more randoms, like, so that they're independent. Um, so let's put in sample and hold, and a sample and hold. And the noise, and the noise. <clears throat> and then, it was this one, right? Okay, into this, so this needs to be split. Into several VCAs. Uh, where are the VCAs? These go on the outputs here. And then these go into the CVs of those. And then we just wire up like this. Boom, boom, and then it needs a gate actually as well. So where's that? And split this again here. No, I lie. We want to split this one. And then gate these here. And then these. Oh no, wait, it needs to go into that sum. Where are these sum thingies? <clears throat> I think these are the LFOs. Where's this one coming from? That's direct. Yeah, it's getting confusing as fuck now. What's this one? Okay, so there's two here. One is just going slightly to the right. Okay, that's coming from LFOs. I think it's this one. No, this one needs to come from here. Like that. Uh, and then like that. Okay, I think we've got independent randoms now.
Artifacts, how's it going? What we could also do is maybe put in a bias here so that we could like tune it up as well as attenuate it. So it'll come in here and then maybe just give it more range to attenuate if we need. done it we created our like cinematic music creating generative machine <laughs> awesome
sounds very organic, like strings and stuff. I actually can't believe it, how we managed to make something sound so, like, kind of expressive, but it's just, like, very simple building blocks, you know?
I actually want to record that. Okay. That's a really nice loop that's going there.
This is actually a nice, big, like, cinematic vibe. I think this could make a nice drum and bass beat, actually. It's got that, like, dun dun kind of uh, interaction between those notes. Which sounds... I, I think, let's try this. Let's try this. <coughs> I'm probably only going to go for, like, another 20 minutes or so, and I'm going to make some dinner. Um... Let's see if we can do this. That was the word I was looking for, the intervals, yes.
a thing in Petwick Monster called the, uh, called, uh, the Petwick called the Tree Monster, which can like pick up a tone and then like attempt to recreate it with a sine wave. So you can get like really clean. Yo, listen to that. Man, you should make more of these drums. Like it's very few of the, very few samples make it onto my actual I use the sample drive. And those these drums are on there.
Maybe we can make like a base. I don't know why Vital keeps fucking doing that. I own a copy. It looks so suspect. It looks so suspect. <laughs> um, it's a it's it's a Bitwig and Vital thing. Uh, anyway, um, so maybe we can create some sort of thing where we side chain this with another thing, i.e., like the a base like a, a bass sound so we can go like boom da, 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 kind of stabby sounds do you know what i mean uh no wait this is the top end so we've split it here so let's just create another one here where we do like so we can do like a call and response but we don't have to chop that be stab um yeah i'm gonna have to call it soonish Let's just get a, a thing going.
500 multi bands on the base. A thousand.
Okay, that's what I'm gonna call it for today, guys. Yeah, I'm always a bit iffy about uh, plugins that ask for like uh, like usernames and passwords and all that stuff because then you got to use them often, so you end up trying to use something that like you will remember, and then ugh, it's just yeah. So I like try not to, and then like for example. Um, I'll put in random stuff and then I'll write it down and then with with Vital, like I put it in, but then each time I open it in the new session, it will pop up and ask me to log in. I don't want to go like figure out like what the random password is. Do you know what I mean? So anyway, um, it's just it's it doesn't it doesn't stop you from using the program. That's the cool thing. It's like it's just a pop up. So. Um, I don't know if it's because it knows that I'm on license or whatever the case is. Um, I'm gonna let this loop once or twice for you guys if you want to hear what we made in the in the game. Uh, anyway, I will see you guys next week. I hope you have an awesome weekend. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, are you streaming artifacts? Are you streaming tonight? I probably won't make it because I gotta head off. But if you are, say in the chat, and then hopefully everyone will come join you. But I will see you guys next week. Have a good one.